Just quickly, I wanted to start out the program today. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, and I, I because I don't think I'm going to get to it later. But I was uh, I was reading some of the obituaries yesterday about Mary Tyler Moore, and the news broke after I was off air yesterday. And by the time I got home, and I had I had an appointment at Doug Stokes State Farm, and by the time I rolled into the house yesterday afternoon, it, it was already old news. But I, I decided to check out some of the obituaries on this woman who. Probably next to Lucy and Carol Burnett, the most had the most impact of any woman on television in in the history of the uh, the medium. And you could say, well, what about people overseas? Well, Americans really still are the television nation. A lot of places don't even know what that is. They haven't even you know gotten into radio yet in some parts of the world. But Mary Tyler Moore had started out life. She was she was a woman who went to uh, well raised as a girl. She went to Catholic schools her entire life. Now, that can inform you on a lot of your views on the world. In 1980, she actually had campaigned for Jimmy Carter's re-election and was considered very much a liberal. About five, six, seven, eight years ago, Edward Asner, who's a, you know, he's a member of the Democrat Socialists of America, was appearing on Bill O'Reilly's program, and he was telling O'Reilly, he said, you know, Mary over the years became much, much more a conservative uh, than, a, than a liberal. Uh, he said it was just her views over life moderated and changed greatly. As it turns out, she gave an interview in 2009 where she explained, she said, there's just not much on television that interests me anymore, so I, I just mainly watch Fox News. And she told the reporter, she said, I especially like watching Krauthammer and O'Reilly. <laughs> and then she said she was disappointed that John McCain hadn't asked her to go out campaigning for him in 2008. So somebody said, so are you a conservative? And she thought for a moment, said, I don't know, call me a libertarian centrist. But all of her causes as she grew older became much more conservative uh, in her life, and she explained at one point she had been asked because she was called a women's uh, rights icon while she was portraying Mary Richards on the Mary Tyler Moore show in the 1970s. And she had been approached by Gloria Steinem to get involved in the women's movement, and she said no. And Steinem was perplexed. Well, ye, uh, your character on TV, of course, it's just a character you play. You know, Archie Bunker, played by Carol O'Connor. O'Connor was a, a liberal and admitted that, too. Uh, you know, just a character you play. But Mary Tyler Moore said, you know, the problem with you feminists is you don't believe in having children and, and being raised in, in a Catholic family and going to Catholic school her entire childhood. She said, motherhood is a good thing. Every woman should be able to experience motherhood. So I just wanted to pass that along today. And sometimes with the passage of years, we get back to the roots we were raised with or we end up having an epiphany and we see the world as it really is. And all of these, uh, all of these you know, feel-good bromides liberals throw out there eventually fade away when you understand how the world really works. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. I've got almost 10 minutes after 8 o'clock. We're at 20 right now. My gosh, the, the media meltdown is continuing over the moves of, uh, of Donald Trump, and especially the meltdown now is coming from not just in the United States, but from people elsewhere. On Anderson Cooper's program last night on the Clinton News Network, former Mexican President Vicente Fox made an appearance, and Cooper was asking him, You know, Mr. President, I'm told that your successor is being pressured not to come and meet with Donald Trump next week over the NAFTA deal and, uh, and t Trump's claim that Mexico is going to pay for the wall. And then Fox went out and said, Well, you know, when it comes to NAFTA, he said, We may as well just withdraw from it. Take a listen for a moment. If at any point in time when he's sitting with the president, he's again uh, uh, aggress aggressive with Mexico, he's a, again offending Mexico. If he is mentioning that he will impose 35% taxation on cars made in Mexico, President Peña should stand up should get out of there and should tell him, we don't need your NAFTA. We can live without it. You cannot. You cannot because of the yes, the food, the grain that you export to Mexico, the meat. Yes, the 40 million US dollars, 40 billion that you export to buy the finished automobiles, luxury, trucks, uh, agricultural machinery, uh, motor parts, Auto parts is over 40 billion, which means again millions of jobs for USA. If the mirror strategy will apply. You tax Mexican imports, we will tax US imports in Mexico.
Oh, and that's going to benefit you how? Two things, and I made some notes on this as I was listening to him. It's actually fairly clean for Vicente Fox. Usually he's got to drop a couple of really naughty words in there while he's speaking. He said, he said, you know, that Trump has offended Mexico. Mexico is a big piece of land, or it's a picture on a map. That's Mexico. How do you offend a country? You offend, people get offended, but how do you offend a country? Number one. All right, let's, let's make that clear. Number two, he said, losing NAFTA is going to hurt you a lot more than it's going to hurt Mexico. Well, Bob Beckel said last night on The Five, Beckel is an old line liberal, worked for Walter Mondale and Jimmy Carter. Beckel said on that program last night, some of you may have heard it, but Beckel said, and, and this, this is sticking with me through this morning, he said, alternative facts are lies. That's what an alternative fact is. It's a lie. He was criticizing the Trump administration. Well, the fact of the matter is I shared the figures yesterday. Uh, the United States, about 13% of what we export goes to Mexico now, Canada being a much bigger trading partner, and then the rest of it is just dispersed to countries around the world. And, and of that, is, President Fox is right when he says a lot of that is foodstuffs. But this is a very hungry planet. So if Mexico doesn't buy all of our foodstuffs, then somebody else will. Number two, Mexico depends on the United States. I mean, about three quarters of what it exports comes here. So without NAFTA, and if he wants to walk away from it, so he's ignoring those facts and presenting his own alternative facts. Therefore, by the rationale of Bob Beckel and the fellow travelers in American media, Vicente Fox is a bald-faced liar, right? Also, Trump is being criticized. People are saying, well, he can't make Mexico pay for this wall. Uh, Mexico won't do it. They'll say no. And uh, what are you going to do, march on Veracruz again and force them to do it and take another, another big chunk of that country? No, that's not happening, and who'd want it in the first place? But, and I say but, there are perhaps alternatives that media, well, you talk about dense people, they probably haven't considered any of this because they're still chasing down some of the rabbit holes Mr. Trump has sent them on over the last week. Paul Ryan, Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, uh, the second most powerful man in Washington, uh, that's what he's called, although I guess Mitch McConnell might say he's tied in that situation, a Republican Ryan appearing on MSDNC with Greta Van Susteren last night. And he said, yes, there are options for Mexico to pay for the wall. There are a lot of different ways of getting um, um, Mexico to, to contribute to doing this. And there are different ways of defining how exactly they pay for it. Point is, he has a promise that he made to the American people, which is to secure our border. A wall is a big part of that. We agree with that goal, and we will be working with him to finance um, construction of the physical barrier, including the wall on the southern border. The law books, it's been sitting there for years. I voted for it like 10 years ago, but nothing has gotten done, and now we have a president who actually wants to secure the border, and we are all in favor of doing that. I think a lot of people are in favor of securing the border on both sides of the aisle, but the estimates are $8 billion to $14 billion. That's about right. And, and the question is whether or not um, that's an effective way to really seal the border. Absolutely. I think you do have to have I think there are more things than just a border security on, on the border. I think you have to have interior enforcement. There's a long conversation we can have about how to enforce our immigration laws. But physically securing the border is essential. Look, we have a massive heroin opioid epidemic problem in America. Part of that is because of drugs coming from the cartels from the south. We have national security concerns. There are lots of concerns which must be addressed by actually securing our border. And so a physical security barrier on the border is something we've all, I voted for, like I said, I think in 2006 or 2007, Chuck Schumer, my friend, voted for that as well back in those days. Over the last month, I've been hearing comments that the Idaho Farm Bureau was concerned about this because Idaho farms, especially obviously during harvest season, these farms depend on migrant laborers and farms all across America apparently depend on migrant laborers. Well, why don't we just charge a fee to Mexico for every migrant laborer that comes here? And they can come and they can pick the apples and they can pick the potatoes and they can pick the grapes and the al almonds and everything else that we have, oranges. But Mexico pays a fee and that fee eventually pays for the wall. So the wall essentially just becomes a gate. And, and the gate can swing open and closed and, you know, we, we can do it that way. But it gives us a modicum of control over what's going on. It's 816. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. On News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 20 because that's what this is really all about. The Mexican government cannot provide for its people. It can't even give them security. The narco terrorists, they run the country for the most part now. They cannot then provide for their own people, and they think that the United States 
should be the safety valve, at the expense of Americans in many cases. And this infuriates them that that safety valve may be pulled away. Well, tell you what, you can still have your safety valve, but it's going to cost you. Therefore, the tax, as people would cross the border to come here and work in the fields. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 22. You're up next. You're on the air. Uh, yes. Uh, I just wanted to comment on your Mary Tyler Moore uh, theme. Sure. Uh, it was Winston Ch- Churchill who said, if you're not liberal when you're young, you don't have a heart. If you're not conservative when you're old, you don't have a brain. Uh, we've never heard that one before. Uh, but thank you, though. 817. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Colley with you. We all think we sound profound when we, do, we repeat a quote that's, you know, 80 years old that people have been repeating over and over and over again thousands of times a year. Uh, 817, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 20 right now. The other leg of this stool right now is, the, um, is, is what's going on with the refugee resettlement program. And the Libbies are just crying left and right about this. The Council on American-Islamic Relations denouncing Donald Trump. Well, what would you expect? The executive director of the Council on American-Islamic Relations, known as CARE, this according to the Daily Caller, said Wednesday that refusing to accept Muslim refugees is the moral equivalent of slavery. Well, most of these Muslim countries are slaveholding countries as it is. We know that. Uh, and, and the, the Quran says, hey, you know, go ahead, take, take, these, uh, take these nine-year-old girls as your sex slaves and do whatever you please with them. After all, the founder of the faith did, <laughs> if, you get your, if you get what I mean. <laughs> the writer goes on to say, Nihad Awad, boy, I'll tell you what, his family was in the back of the line when they were passing out last names. Nihad Awad, CARE's national executive director, called the proposed border wall a multi-billion dollar monument to racism. Awad went on to say that President Trump's proposal has nothing to do with national security and is strictly an Islamophobic proposal. You know, he ought to go out and talk to people in this country who've lost uh, loved ones, whether in Orlando at that nightclub or whether in San Bernardino and and these various places, and find out how they really feel about, uh, about, uh, you know, this this sieve we call the American border and uh, refugee program. A rabbi at the press conference, Joseph Berman, was on the verge of tears and said, that the proposal to bar the entry of refugees from several terrorist hotbeds, such as Syria and Somalia, is, quote, an affront to God, unquote. And then, of course, I think Mr. Uh, Awad said, Oh, thank you, liberal rabbi. We will kill you last. Useful idiot. 820, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 21. Obviously, I have more on this this morning. We're also going to talk a little bit of law enforcement coming up in a few minutes. I believe we have a guest from the Twin Falls County Sheriff's Department who will be dropping by. Oh, I also got to share with you the comments, if I can, from the mayor of San Francisco, who's just discovered that that hosting a sanctuary city, not only is it illegal, uh, but it may cost him dearly. (laughs) Well, they never thought anybody was actually going to do what they promised. They don't. I was just reading where uh, the president took on ABC's David Muir. Now, look, I worked with David for a few years in the 1990s, sat side by side with him in the office at a television station, and uh, and David was not the type of guy that would respond well to, how shall we put this, an aggressive challenge. He was really good at reading a teleprompter, and he still is. And I like him. I mean, we were good friends, and uh, as I mentioned last week, he dragged me out to the one only time I've ever been to a cigar bar, and we nearly choked to death when we went there. Um, but Trump jumped all over him last night about how ABC had treated the visit to the CIA last Saturday, and uh, I think David was wondering, how did I get myself into this? Oh, right, big pay check. That's it. That's it. Hey, quick note. Uh, tomorrow morning, we're going to be looking at low temperatures down in the single digits, some places maybe even below zero, and uh, the cold, cold winter is going to continue from what I can see in the long-range forecast. Actually, there was a long-range forecast that says we're going to have cold weather straight through spring. You don't necessarily know that, but, I mean, these are predictions based on previous winters and the climate models and the like. And that means your heating unit is going to be taxed. And if you've got issues with it, you've got to call the pros at Ramsey Heating and Electric in uh, in Burley. They'll come out and they'll get the job done right, and the pros at Ramsey's will make sure it's done right the first time. 
You can reach Ramsey Heating and Electric by just dropping in into the store at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The telephone number is 678-0459, 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they sell warm winters and cool summers. So the president, as part of his efforts to build this border wall, has also said there's going to be a crackdown on sanctuary cities. How do you do that? It's called carrot and stick. You go to all of these cities, which which feed at the federal trough, and I mean they they are like knocking everybody else out of the way to do it because they so poorly run these cities controlled by Democrats. They have no ability to really pay the bills, so they're constantly going hand in hand to Washington. Mr. Trump says, "All right, you want to defy federal law, you want to def- defy the Constitution." Uh, sorry, but the tap is going to run dry at the public trough. The mayor of San Francisco, California, is very, very angry about this, and he's trying to put a, his best face on it. I happen to be listening to some of this uh, this morning, and i got to tell you, these people seem to think that they're still going to be able to dictate to Washington how the world operates. Now, I don't know about you, but when we were we were looking at the last eight years, if anybody— and this is where media has really gotten off the rails, too. If you were looking at anybody in media and telling them at that point uh, that, that you know we were going to defy the federal government, you were called a racist and a bigot, and it was all because you didn't like Barack Obama because Barack Obama happens to be a black man. Well, now, is it that they don't like Mr. Trump because he's a white guy? Maybe a little orange. I mean, you know, that, that that's obvious, too, I suppose, but... You know, people make fun of him about the rather orange complexion he has. That's just the television makeup. We should be be pointing that out, too, as well. But I'm telling you, these people have lost their collective minds, and somehow they think that, and as I was telling people on my preview today, I do a 10-minute preview or so every day on Facebook just before we go on air here. The latest approval ratings for Mr. Trump, 59%. Just a week ago, all of the folks in mainstream media were breathlessly telling you, well, Mr. Trump takes office as the most unpopular president in American history. I got thinking about that. They keep talking about numbers and alternative facts. Nobody was doing any polling data when James Madison was president or, or, or Monroe or uh, John Quincy Adams. There was no polling data or Martin Van Buren or, or Pierce or Buchanan. So since they don't know that, how can they say that? That would be an alternative fact. And by the definition of Bob Beckel, that would be a lie from your mainstream media. We have a caller with us. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Go ahead. I just have uh, out of the latest Sugar Producer magazine, Mexico is subsidizing and dumping sugar in the U.S. market, and, of course, that is causing uh, problems for our growers right here. We have 180,000 acres, and they're this year alone, Mexico is oversupplying our market with more than 254,000 tons of sugar on a top of our huge domestic crop. We had a big crop this year. This can only be resolved by the U.S. Mexican modifying the suspension agreements. Our industry has been pressing very hard for many now to fix it. So NAFTA is not working for us. It's working for Mexico. Even I, I mentioned this one, uh, yesterday, uh, Adrian, on the show. There was a liberal writer at the Boston Globe who was trying to excuse NAFTA away, but he admitted in his column that NAFTA really has done very little for the growth of the U.S. economy. And he said it's actually like a hundredth of one percent in the, the activity that's actually taken place. Well, absolutely. And before NAFTA, um, we our trade balance with Mexico was basically zero. And it's uh, in the ser- it's billions now. I don't know, 50, 60, 70 billion. I haven't gotten the latest figure. But between Canada and Mexico, it's about $150 billion a year. So NAFTA is not working. For us, it's working for – I have a friend in Canada, and they just laugh, they just laugh at us. Who's, do- who's doing your negotiations down there? Well, go, on to, go on to some of the old lumber towns in northern Idaho and ask them how it worked out. Yeah, right. Well, that's exactly right. So anyway, this is just – it's out of the latest Sugar Producer magazine, and uh, this is the guy that's uh, the executive vice president for the American Sugar Beet uh, Growers Association. So I would trust these figures, and I wanted to share them with you. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, Mexico seems to believe that uh, we this is like a reparations payment. Well, that, there was something called it was that they, they, there was the purchase of that little strip of land, uh, which is now you know if you go down to New Mexico, it's what Taos and some of that area. 
that was the uh, that was the reparations payment for actually defeating them in the war. Usually, the victor doesn't make the payment, but we did it. We gave them a huge sack of money for it, and most of that land was just empty at the time. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. Dan Tom is going to be joining us in a couple of minutes from the Twin Falls County Sheriff's Department. Uh, just a reminder, if you're having difficulty hearing our show, it might actually be your ears. If that's the case, you've got to get in touch with Dr. Christine Pickup, the doctor of audiology at Mount Harrison Audiology in Rupert, and she's offering a brand new device that works better than any existing hearing aid on the market. It works directly with the brain to improve your hearing and to decipher sounds. You can call Dr. Pickup today to schedule your personal fitting appointment. There's a two-week free trial. Open your world to better hearing. The t- telephone number at Mount Harrison Audiology in Rupert, 312-0957. That's 312 312- 0957.